So in this video, we're going to be looking at another interference effect of light. This time, what we're going to look at is interference in a thin wedge of air, and that wedge of air is going to exist between the surface of a converging lens here, and we've got a converging lens with a spherical, circular converging lens with a spherical uh, surface, and what we're going to do is we're going to put it on a flat piece of glass here. So this is a, a flat, plain glass. And when we put the two together, what we have is we have a thin wedge of air that is trapped between the bottom surface of the lens and the top surface of the pane of glass. And that generates a wedge of air that can cause interference. And since the lens has a circular shape, a circular symmetry, it will generate circular fringes of bright and dark uh, areas where the light is either constructively interfering or destructively interfering. Now, the person who first noticed this was Sir Isaac Newton, and he actually used this to determine when he had ground a lens to the perfect shape. And in fact, that is its major application, is it allows you to use the interference of light to determine that the shape of the surface of the lens is perfectly spherical and hasn't got any uh, deviations. And this technique allows you to determine that to within a fraction of the wavelength of light, which is what you need to make a high quality lens. Now, unfortunately, the setup we have here is a little bit uh, uh, difficult to use. So what we actually have is a pre-made uh, uh, cell here, which has both the lens and the piece of glass inside it. And we'll show you that illuminated by a bright light source in a minute. However, first, we have to look at the geometry of the situation and calculate what we expect to see when we shine a bright light on this system. So here we have the situation where we've got a, a converging lens uh, here placed on a flat sheet of glass. So these are both uh, uh, glass here. And the surface of a converging lens is the surface of a, is part of the surface of a sphere. And so we have a radius of curvature associated with that surface, as we've shown here. And that radius of curvature here is, is little r. Now, what we want is just like we had for the thin wedge, we want a relationship between distance from the point of contact here and the thickness of the wedge, because this is where the light's going to be uh, reflecting off the bottom surface of the lens and the top surface of the sheet of glass, and then we get our interference pattern. So, we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, geometry here. So first, we're going to look at the right angle triangle. So we're going to look at O, Y here, and X. And so by Pythagoras, uh, well, in fact, first of all, I should say is this is a diameter of the circle. And so the angle that's subtended um, at the, uh, by the diameter is always 90 degrees, right? So I take any point on this uh, um, uh, circumference here, and I draw a line to opposite ends of the diameter. The angle I get here is always going to be 90 degrees. And that's just a basic uh, bit of geometry. So what I have here is I have a right angle triangle. And so by Pythagoras, what I have is I have O y squared, so that's the line OY, plus uh, xy uh, squared, and that's going to be equal to ox squared, but ox squared is just twice the diameter, twice the radius, sorry, of the circle, it's just the diameter of the circle, and so that's 4 times the radius squared, so 2r in brackets squared. So that's the first triangle, but what I don't know is I don't know what OY is, and I don't know what XY is, so I want to get rid of these. So what I'm going to draw is a line from Y here so that it uh, uh, intersects uh, the line OX and is perpendicular. And we're going to call the point where it intersects N, and so I can split this uh, triangle into two uh, right angle triangles. So if we look at O, uh, N, and Y, so we're looking now at this upper right angle triangle, then again from Pythagoras, I have O, N squared plus N, Y squared is equal to um, O, Y squared. 
But ny squared here, that's this distance, this is just how far I am um, from the point of contact because this y point here, I'm going to allow it to move along the bottom edge of the um, uh, lens here. It can be any point along the edge of the lens. So this distance here, ny, is just this distance from the point of contact. So that's just the um, distance x. So this I can write as x squared. Now, on, if we have uh, a look at this, well, o times x, uh, sorry, from o to x is just 2 times r. And then if I subtract off the thickness of the wedge at this point, which is the thickness t, then this gives me the distance on. So I can write this as 2r minus t squared. Right? And then this is equal to OY squared. But you can see now that I can get rid of OY from this top equation, which is, uh, which is why we did this triangle. So that's the first triangle. Now let's look at this bottom triangle here. So that's the triangle uh, that I've just shaded in at the bottom here. So this is NY times X. So if I look at this, I'm going to have NX squared plus NY squared and that's going to be equal to xy squared. Well, nx squared is just this distance here, so that's the thickness of the fringe, that's t, uh, thickness of the wedge, that's t squared, plus, and then ny uh, distance here is just x, so that's x squared, and that's equal to xy squared. So now I can take my expression for OY and I can take my expression for XY and I can put them into this uh, uh, top equation here and get rid of all the unknowns. And so when I do that, I've got OY squared here. Well, this is 2R minus T squared plus X squared. So that's my OY squared. Then I've got my XY squared, so plus T squared plus X squared. And that's equal to 4 r squared. So all I have to do now is do some rearrangement here. So let's expand out this bracket. So I'm going to have 4r squared and then I'm going to have minus 4rt and then plus t squared uh, plus x squared plus t squared um, and I'm going to make that 2x squared because I've got these two x squared here and that's equal to 4r squared. So I can cancel the 4r squareds. So those terms are, are gone. Um, I'm going to have 2t squared uh, here now. Um, so if I move, uh, let's do this right. So I'm going to have 2t uh, squared plus 2x squared um, is equal to uh, 4 times r times t. So I can divide through by 2 and what I have is that t squared plus x squared is equal to 2r times t. And we're going to use this in a minute to calculate the pattern of fringes that we're going to get from this interference in this wedge. So here's the expression uh, that we just derived, and what we're now going to use is the thin uh, lens approximation. And what that tells us is that because we're assuming this is a thin lens, it has to have a very large radius of curvature. And so R is going to be large, and what that means is that this surface here is not going to curve very much, which means that the radius of curvature is going to be a lot, lot greater than the thickness of this wedge. So R is going to be a lot greater than the uh, thickness of the wedge T. And so what that means is that we can uh, neglect uh, terms of uh, T squared or higher. So if we do that, it means that we're going to end up with a result that says that X squared is approximately equal to 2 times the radius of curvature times the thickness. And that means that the thickness of the wedge is roughly equal to X squared over 2 times the radius of curvature. So now we can put in our condition for destructive interference. And if we do that, then we have that the thickness of the wedge, again, if we look at this, we won't get a phase change off the top reflection, which is coming off here. So we've got our ray coming in here. It's going to reflect off the top surface, and that will have no phase change. But the ray that reflects off the bottom surface, because it's reflecting off a, a medium with a higher refractive index, remember this is glass, so it's about 1.5. This is air, so it's about 1.0. This will have a phase change of pi. 
So again, we have the conditions where we can use our thin film interference formula that we derived. So what we have is that we have for destructive interferences that the thickness of the wedge, which we used H4 before, was equal to n lambda over 2. So what I'm going to do now is combine these together, and of course we'll use T for the thickness of the wedge. And so we get the condition that n lambda over 2 is equal to x squared over 2r, when I can cancel the 2s, and that tells me that I will get destructive interference when x is equal to the square root of 2n, uh, sorry, not 2, uh, lambda n times r. So this is my condition for destructive interference. For constructive interference, um, remember we had this additional factor of um, 2n uh, plus 1. So we had here that the thickness, and I'll use the, the, the symbol t for that, was equal to 2n plus 1 times lambda over 4. And so again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that into this expression here for the thickness uh, that we got for our wedge at a distance x from the point of contact. And what I will get for constructive interference now is that x squared over 2 times r uh, will equal uh, 2n plus 1 times lambda over 4. Well, I can cancel the 2 here, and I can turn this 4 into a, a, a 2. And then um, I can actually put the 2 inside the brackets here. So what I will get is that x is equal to, and now the square root, well, 2n over 2, so that's n, and then 1 over 2 is a half, so n plus a half, and then lambda times r. And so that's the condition for uh, constructive interference. So what does this mean? Well, if I look at this pattern here, uh, what I will have for destructive interference is when n is equal to 0, x is equal to 0. So I will always get a dark fringe in the center of the pattern. Because there is circular symmetry around this axis here, right? so if we go around this axis, you know, this lens will be uh, circularly symmetric because it's, the, it's got the surface of a sphere here. So even if the lens itself is square, the wedge here has circular symmetry um, because it's the surface of a sphere. So I've got circular symmetry around this. So as a fixed distance here will correspond to essentially a ring. So at a certain ring, uh, at a distance here corresponds to the radius of a ring. And so when the radius of that ring uh, is equal to the square root of some integer times the wavelength times the radius of curvature, I will get a dark fringe. And when it's equal to n plus a half times the wavelength times the radius of curvature, I will get a bright fringe. So this pattern here I will get is rings. But you notice here that they go as the square root of n, so it will be rings with decreasing thickness as the uh, value of um, uh, n increases, because I'm taking the square root of, of n, right? It goes as the square root. So I'm going to get bright and dark fringes, which are rings with decreasing thickness, and I will get a dark ring in the center here, and that, of course, is because the bottom surface gives me a phase change of pi. So if the thickness of the, fringe, if the, thickness of the wedge is zero, these things will be automatically pi uh, out of phase and cancel and give me a dark pattern. So now we can see that the pattern we should be obtaining is that of a, a series of rings. And when we take a photograph of this, it's difficult to see uh, just at a random angle and particularly on a video. Um, but what we've got is we've positioned the camera at just the right angle and taken some still photographs so that you can see the pattern of rings that appears here. Now what you should see when you look at that pattern is you'll see a dark ring in the center and that of course is because the wave that reflects off the bottom of the glass has its phase inverted and so you end up when there's a zero thickness of the uh, wedge you end up with a destructive interference and so you always end up with a dark ring in the center. 
And this is a very useful phenomenon because you can use it in order to make sure that your lens has been ground to the correct specifications because if your lens is off slightly by even a fraction of a wavelength, you will see a distortion in the pattern when you place the, ring, uh, the lens up against this uh, flat plate. Um, and so you will end up with distortions in the pattern and you can use that to make sure that your lenses are manufactured to a very exacting specification. So now we've seen Newton's rings uh, from this cell. You could see the dark area in the middle and the rings going around. And Newton used this to measure the surfaces of lenses to accurately grind them to a perfectly spherical shape. Ironically though, of course, Newton believed that light was a particle and yet here we've been using the fact that light interferes and only waves can interfere with themselves and generate this sort of interference pattern, although unfortunately Newton was not aware of that at the time. He just had a very practical use for this, which was grinding lenses. So that's it for our discussion of Newton's rings. Mm -hmm.